Meet me. Welcome back everyone to another Squirrely Guide video. This one was triggered by a handful of new players who reached out to me with questions about where they should spend their molas, so I figured why not just make a guide about it. So as always, my guides are broken down into several topics so you guys can skip to the sections you're interested in, and the topics are number one, what are molagoras and why are they important? Number two, how do you get molagoras? Number three, investing molagoras intelligently. Number four, we're going to talk about what are high mola investment heroes. Number five, we're going to talk about low mola investment heroes. And number six, we're going to talk about min-maxing molagora investment. So without further ado, let's get started. Topic number one, what are Molagoras and why are they important? They're actually quite possibly the most important resource in the game, and you need them for this button right here called Skill Enhance. So we're going to go ahead and click on it and I'll describe what Molagoras do. So here you see my Molagora account. Back in the day you needed these to update like on um, the highest level skills, but nowadays it's useless. You just downgrade them to Molas, um, so don't worry about the distinction between them anymore. Now, the Molagoras are needed to enhance your abilities. So all heroes in Epic 7 have three skills, and all of them have a differing amount of Molas that you need to upgrade them. So you're going to see at the lower enhancement levels, it only takes one Mola. For Sermi, at the higher enhancement levels, it takes four. You'll also notice the higher upgrades requires more gold and higher levels of catalysts. But we don't care about that right now, we're only talking about the Molas. The reason that Molagoras are important is because they dramatically improve the potency of the hero by making their abilities hit harder, um, cycle faster, have a higher chance to land, um, things like that. So let's look at Sermia's S1. You're going to see that, you know, plus one, 5% more damage, plus two, 5% more effect chance. So here you'll see it has 55% chance. If I molded everything, it's an extra 20%. So she'd have a 75% chance to make the target unhealable instead of 55% chance, which is a really big deal, right? Instead of basically landing it 50% of the time, you land it 3 out of 4 times. It's very noticeable when you use them a lot. Also, in terms of damage modifiers, since I don't have her S3, uh, her S1 Molud, I'm doing 30% less damage than I could be with Sermia's S1 if I max Molud her. Also, you're going to see things like reduced skill cooldowns. Those are almost always mandatory for any hero you want to invest in. But in a nutshell, that's what Molagoras are and why they're very important. It's because they dramatically increase the power output of a hero. And the other thing that makes them so important to manage properly is that they're a time-gated resource. But we'll talk about that in future topics. Let's move on. Topic number two. How do you get Molagoras? Now, I just mentioned that Molagoras are a time-gated resource. This means that Molagoras, there's no way to farm for them. There's literally no way. They are a time-gated resource. Even whales can only get a specific amount, although they can buy Molagora packs. Um, we'll get into that later. But in general, every week, you are given the opportunity to buy four Molas. You can get two from the Transmit Stone shop, and you can get one seed, and we'll tell you how to use seeds later, from the Conquest Point shop. The fourth one, you need to be in a guild, so absolutely join a guild, is in the guild member shop. You can buy one seed there. So you get four guaranteed molas a week. Absolutely do not skip this. Make sure you are buying four every single week or you're going to regret it. The seeds you can't use to upgrade your heroes, but what you do is you come here and basically you can, um, you'll see my seed count up here. I have 20 seeds so far, and then you can convert them um, into Molagoras by clicking this summon button, or you could wait the 18 hours. And that's how you convert Molagora seeds into Molagoras and invest them into your heroes. The other ways to get Molagoras are Obviously, um, the banners, the banner events sometimes give it to you. The side quests always have one in the exchange shop. Some of the bigger side stories will have a Molagora battle where you can get one Molagora. And the bigger events also will often give you a Molagora go after you clear the entire event. 
but those are few and far between. Those are not consistent sources of molas. The most consistent source is those four that I showed you before that you can get every single week. Now, obviously, there's also a pack for this that pops up once a month. Um, they, I think they upped the numbers now, so you can actually buy up to, like, I think... 20 or 30 of them. Um, I haven't bought one in a while, so I don't really know what the exact number is. I think back then it was 18. I think it's higher now, but they do cost like $100. And if you're F2P, that's not really something you're thinking about. So I won't go further into that. But if you're willing to whale, um, the top whales, Molagora and Mystic Packs are generally what they focus on. So I think that about covers how to get Molagoras. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with banner events, what I meant was this thing um every single time you log into epic 7 you can get rewards from this and usually if it has molagoras it's like the top reward so make sure you're clicking on this as well and with that let's move on topic number three is investing molas intelligently um, this is probably going to be the most important topic for new players because in the beginning and i actually forgot to mention this in the last topic um you will have a decent amount of molas because when you're doing a regular adventure and you clear those um whatever the three star quest you actually do get molas from that as well so in the very beginning of the game you get a big chunk of them but after that like i said you only really get four to five a week if you factor in like the side quests and stuff so if you're an f2p player it takes you more than a month worth of molas to fully mola a hero so you have to be very selective about where you throw your molas in otherwise you're going to really really neuter your progress i guarantee it now in general it is much better to have a small pool of fully molded heroes rather than an enormous pool of heroes that have like one to two molas in it because I had some people send me screenshots, and it's a common problem I see where they're like, here's my list of heroes, what do you think I should use? And they send me like 30 heroes, and I'm like, how are you a two-month player, and you have like 40 different heroes that are at plus three, plus four, and basically all of them are unusable. You want to pick the core heroes. Um, you can watch some of my other guides on what heroes are proper heroes to invest in for F2P players, and you want to mola them hard, and you want to use them in all content. Um, not wastefully, though. We'll talk about that more in topics four and five, but the heroes that are going to be your core heroes, invest into them heavily because these modifiers matter a lot. Like this last 10% here, that matters a lot. So you don't want to half-ass the molas if it's a hero you're going to use all the time. If it's a hero you intend on using in all content, mola it hard, mola it fully, and then move on. Don't split your molas all across everywhere and waste resources. The other thing that is a pet peeve of mine is... Um, do not waste molas on quote-unquote experimentation. This is the stupidest thing I've seen people say where people will be like, Oh, well, I wanted to put molas into him to test the damage, to test the damage, and it turns out he didn't do a lot of damage, so I stopped using him. So now you just have molas wasted into a hero that you're never planning on using. I know the American education system is absolute shit nowadays and people can't do basic math anymore, but really it's not that complicated and you don't even have to do any math. There are tons of great damage calculators out there. Do not mola stuff just to test damage. When it says 5% more damage dealt, it's 5% more damage dealt. Like, um, it's even easier if it's like 10%. Just take one-tenth of the damage you did, and that's how much more damage you'll do, basically. Like, you don't need to have molas invested just to test damage. Um, minus skill cooldowns are pretty self-explanatory. You don't need molas to quote-unquote test that. If you aren't sure you're going to be using that hero in the future absolutely do not put any molas into it. You can do all the testing that you need to without investing any molas. If they perform well for you without any molas, I guarantee you they're going to dominate when you put the molas in. So do not waste molas on experimentation, please. Now, the last part of this is kind of like an introduction to the next section, but basically it's understanding the difference between high mola investment heroes and low mola investment heroes there are some heroes in this game 
that you can use at their full potential without putting too much Mola Gora into them. And there are other heroes where you really need to max Mola them to really make the most use out of them. So without further ado, let's move on to the next topic. All right, so topic number four, let's talk about high Molagora investment heroes. Now, as a general rule of thumb, high Molagora investment heroes tend to be bruisers or DPS heroes. Um, I'll give you a perfect example right here. Something like SSB is a hero where you really want to max Mola her if you're going to use her because all of the damage modifiers are big. I mean, look at 15% damage on her S3. Like, you need to max this. You're going to want to max her S3 because she uses it all the time. You're going to want to max her S1 because that's what she's doing anytime she's not s 3 These are the kind of heroes where to really get the most... Um, use out of them, you really want them at plus 15 or as close to it as possible. Now, there are other DPS heroes like Sermia where it's really not that necessary because if you're using Sermia in PvP, you're almost never using the S1 anyway, right? So you're going to notice I have no Molas in the S1. But the S3 is max Molad because with the way her, if you're not familiar with Sermia, if you kill someone with S3, she can use it every single turn. So basically, because I know I'm only using the S3, I only Mola the S3. Um, because this is just a waste of Molas to me, the way that I use Sermia. But generally, high Mola investment heroes are damage heroes, where all of their mods are damage, and they have hard-hitting S3s, but outside the S3, they're always spamming the S1. That damage adds up, especially in like a long RTA match, um, where most of the damage is actually coming from the S1. You need those modifiers, things like Alencia, things like Charles, uh, Arbiter Vildred. All of those heroes benefit greatly from Max Molas. But be selective about the skills. Like K-Ron I use very often, but his S2 sucks ass. It changes his immortality cooldown from 9 turns to 6 turns. Once his immortality is proc, Kron will never survive six turns, so this is a useless skill to Mola. So I'm not saying just because they're bruisers, max Mola them. Um, if their skill's idiotic like this one, don't put any Molas into it at all. But basically anything that has damage modifiers, if they have damage modifiers and they actually use those abilities, you're going to want to plus 15 them to make the most use out of them. In general, um... This bruisers are often plus 15, things like Alencia Charles again. Um, DPSs that are just pure hard-hitting DPSs like cleavers. Generally, you can get away with max moling only their um, cleaving moves. Like for Judge Keith, say it's S2 and S3. Um, S1, a lot of people will just ignore. I did it anyway because I love Judge Keith, say. Um, but yeah. In general, with DPS heroes that are just straight up one-shotters, you might be able to get away with only doing the S3, but tanky bruisers, you will almost always want a plus 15 them. So with that, let's move on to low Mola investment heroes. Topic number five, low Mola investment heroes. We talked about high Mola investment heroes, so what's the difference between a low Mola investment heroes? It's generally for utility heroes, where... They can do their job, and their job is not damage. I'm going to use Lilius as my first example, although I honestly put a decent amount of Molas into her. But really, she can do everything she needs to do with one, two, five Molas, because really you just need to get the minus one turn cooldown on the S2 and the S3. I guess you could argue you should really get um, max out the S2 to make it a 100% effect chance, but 90% is pretty decent. And after that, if you're not intending to use her as a DPS, the rest of these modifiers don't really matter. Now at the high end, a lot of people do build damage Liliuses and they will want those, but if you're just using her as a cleanser and a provoker, those damage mods don't matter. You can have her do her job without putting too many molas into her. Another example, like Krow, you're going to want to mola the S3 to get that turn cooldown, and you're going to want to mola to get the turn cooldown on the S2. After that, you don't really need to care about the molas that much. He'll do his job. Um, I, saw, I know even Legend players barely mola their Krows. He just got these turn cooldowns, and it was more than, more than enough. The other thing are things like Soul Weavers very often don't need a whole lot of Molas. Um, typically, 
When I say low mola investment heroes, these kind of heroes almost always what you're going for is to turn cooldown or an effect chance um, skill enhance. After that you don't really care, like Ruel, you really need to turn cooldown on her S3. But you'll notice I use my Ruel all the time, all the time, and she's only plus 6. And her S2, I mean, I didn't even max that, I have nothing in her S1, and I'm using her all the freaking time in all content. But the thing is, her S2, even without Molas, is a pretty massive heal. I didn't feel like max moling it will make a huge difference. I mean, it'll probably win you a handful of matches, but in general, it ends up being a full heal anyway. So for healers, very often, the only thing you need to Mola is up to the point where you get the turn cooldown. And after that, it really doesn't matter, just an extra bonus. If you have a lot of molas sitting around, then feel free to dump a few in to get more heals on them. But in general, it's really not that important. So basically, that's a theme with low investment heroes. Utility heroes where damage is not the priority, that's the key here. Um, you need to max mola heroes often when damage is their main job. For utility heroes, you very often can skip a lot of them. I think another great example of that is actually um, Dizzy here. Dizzy, again, I use her all the time. I only went for the turn cooldowns after that. I'm not using her as a DPS, so it doesn't really matter that I didn't get the rest of the Molagora investment into her. So I think that about wraps that up. Let's move on to the final topic. So topic number six is min-maxing Mola investment. This will actually be a pretty quick topic because there's not many ways to do this, but there's just two things I wanted to point out. Number one, they have a new mechanic where if you get to friendship level 10, um, you get three skill points. Um, and if you already have them at plus 15, it actually gets returned to you in the form of three Molagoras. So if you have plus 15 heroes um, from before this was implemented, you're going to want to get them to friendship level 10, and you'll immediately get refunded three Molagoras. Um, when that patch came out, I got refunded like 50-something Molas with all the people I had at plus 15. Um, so that's going to be a nice boon to you. The second thing for min-maxing Molas is... Do not Molagora heroes, I mean, you can if you're impatient, and it's fine, it's not a big deal, but if you really want to min-max Molas, I'm going to show you what I'm doing with my Sinful Angie. So for Sinful Angie, pretty much all of her abilities are effectively completely useless. Um, I don't really care about the effect chance on her S1, I don't care about the healing on her S2. The only thing I really want is this one turn cooldown, and it only takes one Mola, so it's really quite cheap. But instead of using one Mola, because I know that I'm only going to invest one Mola into her anyway, what I'm doing with her is instead of burning one Mola just to get that one move, I'm going to get her to friendship level 10, and then that will give me three skill points that I can use to enhance her skills. So that way, like I said, there was only one skill enhance I was interested in anyway on Sinful Angelica. So once I get her to friendship level 10, I'll get this minus one turn cooldown. I'll just dump the other two into something random like these two or something. And then I'll have Sinful Angie Mola to the extent I need her to be without having invested a single Molagora into her. And I'm sure there are other heroes like that, like maybe Oxlots if you didn't care about the S3 cooldown. You could kind of do that with him as well. Save a few molas by just getting him to max friendship and then dumping it all into the S2. There are a lot of heroes like that where really you don't need to put too many molagoras into them. Like maybe like Broman, I mean arguably you could molas S2 as well, but um, General Purgis... If you were, I was impatient, but theoretically you could just wait a little bit, save some molas and just get his S2 and S3 done. You can always, if you don't intend to plus 15 them, the smartest move is always to get them to friendship level 10 first. So you can invest those skills into them before wasting actual molagoras. Um, if you're going to plus 15 a hero anyway, there's no reason to do that. Just plus 15 them right away because you'll get those three molagoras back. But for heroes where there's absolutely no reason to plus 15 them, it's always beneficial to get them to friendship level 10 first. And um, they also have that new artifact that doubles your friendship gain. So, 
I think that was my final topic on Molagoras. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And I hope for newer players, this really addressed a lot of your questions and concerns about Molagoras, how to invest them, how to get them, etc., etc. And as always, um, I hope Dr. Squirrel was able to help you out. So anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more Squirrely Guide videos. Until next time, peace out, boys.